Automation Blocks for Premiere Pro comes with a collection of keyframing tools which create frequently needed animations in one click. Let's select some clips in our timeline and run the tool Elastic Scale In Out for example. The clips now animate in and out nicely. Technically, Automation Blocks created keyframes here in the effect controls to create the animation. In the Inputs panel of Automation Blocks you can tweak the animation. You can choose the duration which is 0.5 seconds by default, choose if you want to animate in, out or both and if existing keys on the animated properties should be removed or not. Usually it's a good idea to keep this option enabled unless you have other animations of the clip which should be combined with the new animations. This particular tool also has an option to add rotation. If we enable it and run the tool again, the result looks like this. If you want a more subtle animation, you can use the tool Fade In Out Opacity Subtle Scale. As you can see, the clips now fade in, but compared to a basic opacity fade, the fade in looks more refined and elegant because it's combined with a slight zoom. If you want it even more basic, use this variant, which is just a basic opacity fade without any zoom. Next, let's take a look at a very special animation, the ball bounce. This animation just animates layers in and not out. It actually runs a physics simulation to create a physically correct motion pass. If you choose a higher value for elasticity, the bounces become higher and the animation becomes longer. If we set the move to the side parameter to minus 400 for example and run the tool again, it moves 400 pixels to the left while bouncing. For positive numbers it would move to the right instead. The tools in the Add Current Time section do not animate clips in or out, but insert an animation at the current time instead. Let's move the current time indicator here and with the clip selected apply the Scale Bump at Current Time. The resulting animation looks like this. These kinds of animations are great to control the viewer's focus, as if the question mark would shout Hey, look at me, I am important right now. By the way, all scaling animations always scale around the anchor point, which is currently located at this dot here. If you move the anchor point to other locations, you can create variations of the effect. The tools for remote interviews allow to toggle quickly between a small and a large clip, which are shown side by side. We cover those tools in detail in a separate tutorial. If you want to get rid of keyframed animations for whatever reason, you can use one of the tools in the Remove section. The first one removes all keyframes from the properties Position, Scale, Rotation, Anchor Point and Opacity, here in the Motion section of the clip. You can also disable those individually if you just want to clear the keyframes of some of those properties. The second tool really clears all keyframes from the selected clips. In addition to the Transform properties, this includes keyframes on effects, for example. Finally, the tools in the Add Motion section generate a motion over the entire duration of the selected clips. The Ken Burns Pan and Zoom tool is great to add motion to slideshows and is covered in detail in a separate tutorial. The Wiggle tool moves the select layers in a random way. Let's select those layers and first apply a wiggle with one wiggle per second and an amount of 100 pixels. The result looks like this. To make it even more interesting, we overlay the wiggle with a second one, which is much faster with 10 wiggles per second, but also much smaller with just 5 pixels. The result looks a little bit more complex and combines the slow and the fast wiggle nicely. Let's take a quick look at the block code of the Fade In Out Opacity tool, such that you can get an idea how to modify the tools and to create your own variants. Here at the very top of the code you can set the default values for the inputs. So if you love long fades, you can set the default duration to 1.5 seconds for example. If you expand this block you can see the details of the code. We first retrieve a list of all selected clips and show a warning if this list is empty or in other words if no clip is selected. Then for each of the selected clips we do everything that is nested here inside this green block. In total we do three things. If the remove existing keys option is enabled we clear all opacity keyframes of the clip using this block. If the fade in option is enabled we use these two green blocks here to create two keyframes for fading the clip in. And if the fade out option is enabled, we use these two green blocks to create keyframes for fading the clips out. 
Let's take a closer look at the keyframes for the fade in. The first key is inserted 1.5 seconds behind the in point of the clip, if our fade duration is set to 1.5 seconds. The keyframe keeps the current value which the property already has, so if the clip has an opacity of 100%, the key will use this value, but if your clip has a different opacity, then this opacity is preserved too. The second key is inserted at the beginning of the clip and with an opacity of 0. If you want to create a scale keyframe for example, you could simply duplicate this block, then choose the scale property and enter here the time and the value for that keyframe. If you want to know more about the blocks, you can always right click on the block and choose help to open the documentation of this particular block. So if you want to create your own keyframing tools, don't hesitate to play with the examples and if you want to share your tools with the community or if you have more questions about creating tools, join our community. We are happy to have you on board, let's create some cool stuff together.